today I really want to guide you on the right path and tell you what to take into consideration when you're starting your property journey and how to start the right way. Firstly, I want to ask you something. What does money mean to you? I'm going to presume the whole reason you're getting started in property is to make some extra moolah. Now tell me why? Why do you want to make that money? When you're getting started in your journey, this is what I mean when I say start with the end in mind. What does money mean to you? Some people have poor money habits, okay? And they've been fed these poor money habits because growing up in family life, they've been told that money doesn't grow off of trees. Don't spend, which to be fair, that's a really good advice. Spend wisely, yes. But then you have some really good money habits where parents have taught you about assets and management of assets and income versus outgoings. And what, it, what is an asset? A lot of people have no idea what an asset is. So the question I ask you is what does money mean to you? Okay, because you really want to stem that down and really want to understand what does it mean to you? People will just answer, oh, it's money, it's just money, it comes in and I can just go and buy stuff. That's absolutely true. But you also want to understand what it means for you. So when you're looking at what what you're creating this income for, you will not be frivolous once the money comes in. You want to be grounded. So you want to look at that. What does money mean to you? So you become grounded. So you can educate yourself if you realize that a lot of the learnings you have are, are, are no good. They're no good. They, ha they haven't served you well. You're finding yourself in the same situation. And you know, you don't want to get into property to be finding yourself in the same situation as you were before you even got in property. Because then you're gonna realize your money habits are poor and you never did not have to sort that out. So we're gonna get straight into this video and really look at these key, key things. Before I start, I just want you to know that money is a vehicle, okay? The money is not the end, it's not the full stop. You don't get into property to make money and then, oh, I've made it. That's last, that's absolutely last. What it is, is money is a vehicle. It's a transport to get what you want, okay? So don't make that mistake that you think that I've made the money and I'm sorted. No, because you can make the money and it can go next day. So what you need to do is understand exactly what it is you want this money for, and then you can look at the next step. This video really is for people who are committed to this journey. It's not for someone who woke up one day and thought, you know what, I'm gonna get started in property because I need more money. I need some cash like yesterday. You can make money quite quickly in property when you really apply yourself, but at the same time, it can also take you a while. It also can take you time. It, it depends on what strategy it is that you are going to implement to create that income. By all means, property is a long-term income means. It's a long-term strategy. It's a long-term job. It's a long-term career. It's a long-term business. Don't think you're gonna jump into this and, and, and be in here and be like six months down the line, you jump out and you're sorted. I don't think so. First things first is you want to look at what it is that you want from property. And you want to look at this in two different ways. The first way is looking at it as a short term plan. And what's your long term plan that you want this property to be able to give you? What is it that you want property to give you on a long term basis? And what is it that you want property to satisfy on a short term basis? I'll give you an example. A short term goal could be wanting to quit your job. You can say to yourself, look, I want to quit my job in 18 months and therefore I'm going to work my ass off for the next, oh, well, child friendly. <laughs> I'm going to work my B off for the next 18 months so I can get out of this job or 12 months. Depends on what, what you know, your, your short term plan is and how quickly you want to get out of your job. But that's something that's considered as a short term plan. Another example could be you want to create another income stream so it can add to your long-term plan. For example, like I said, remember, money is a vehicle. So you're gonna get into property and use this income as a vehicle for something. Another example of starting with the end in mind is university. You wanna get your children into university. They may be in year seven or year eight or year nine, and you're realizing that they're gonna be in university soon and you just don't have university kind of money. So you can look at creating this additional income 
by starting your property journey in order to get your children into university. A long-term goal that you may want to consider is that you want to move abroad with your family and you want to uproot everyone and settle somewhere else. That's a long-term plan and that's a beautiful plan, but you need money for that. So there could be something you need to save for, something you need to create, another income stream you need to create. Uh, a great income means for that is buy to let. You just want freedom. You just want freedom to do what you want, when you want, where you want, with who you want, how you want. So these are the kind of things that you want to take into consideration. What is your short term plan? What is your long term plan? Write that down and be very clear on it. These things can change. Okay, as you get older, as you grow, you may be already older and as you're getting even more older, you'll find that I don't need that anymore. My kids are sorting themselves out. They managed to get themselves in university or they got a scholarship. So now my new plan has changed. So my new objectives have changed. What I want has changed. And this is now new. Don't be afraid to change things. What we're really and truly boiling this down to is your reason why. Why is it that you want to get into property? Some people just actually love property. Once you've looked at what it is you want long term and what is it you want short term, you then need to look at how do you want this money coming in? Do you want money coming in short and sweet? So you want monthly income? So every month you may want a thousand pounds coming in a month or you may want 500 pounds coming in a, want, in a month. What is it that you want coming in and how? Do you want 30 grand coming in every six months? Or do you want 30 grand coming in every year? Is it going to be passive income? Is it going to be residual income? And when I say that, what I mean is, are you going to work for this money? Do you want to wake up every day, go and find that house, that investment opportunity, work out the numbers, doing all the due diligence, what, you know, working out the calculations, speaking to agents, speaking to um, mortgage brokers, financial brokers, depending on what strategy it is you're doing. That is what you call hands all the way on. Okay. You're doing every element of the business. Of course you can outsource some of that. You don't have to do everything. So there's parts where you can start, um, where you don't do the sourcing. You don't find the house at all. You work with someone who does that on a full term basis. They find properties, investment properties that suit any particular criteria. And you would then find them, tell them what your criteria is and work with them. And that would alleviate your, some of your time. So you don't have to spend time finding properties. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of knowledge and it takes a whole lot of effort. Okay. And to be fair, it takes a lot of money too, because you are driving all around everywhere up and down, left and right to try and find this perfect house um, that where the numbers work, where the location's great. So it takes effort. So if you want to alleviate some of that effort and not necessarily be so hands-on, then you could work with someone on that front side. Or you can work with someone on the back end on your exit, which is then letting the house out to someone and working with a property manager. Working with someone on the back end, you're not doing as much work. You're not as hands-on. Or, or you can manage the whole process, it's up to you. But that's something you want to look at. Or you can be a hands-off investor, which is what they call armchair investors. And that's someone who sits in the armchair and they make all the decisions. No, no, I'm joking with you. That is someone who has lent their money for a fixed return on their investment for an agreed period of time and they then completely step away from the deal. You can have two different types of hands-off investors. You can have a hands-off investor, which is just like I explained, they lend the money for those terms uh, for, the, for the period of time for a fixed interest rate and they have no involvement in the deal whatsoever. So you would not go to them to ask them for any advice. You, they, they don't, they don't, not that they don't care or they don't know, but that's just not what there is they want to do. They just give you the money, you take it in, utilize it, give it back to them and you're done. Job done. The other alternative is working with an armchair investor, but because of their experience and their love for property themselves, they are happy to get involved to a certain extent. So they're still armchair investors, as in, as in they do none of the work to do any of the deal. But what they do do is they can give you some of their contacts, which could be any of their team, or they can just simply advise you um, over the phone and come down to the project and every now and then. But they have almost like a, a verbal input, but not a physical input. So there's different type of armchairs investors you can work with. And both of them are great. You know, both of them are absolutely fantastic. There's not one better than the other. It really depends on what it is you're looking for. But that's something that 
that you also want to consider. So things you want to ask yourself is what, do I have time for this? Do I have time to invest in property? Do I even have money to invest in property? Because if you have no money, you need to be looking at putting some time in. You need to educate yourself, get some time in and, and put a whole bunch of effort in. So let's have a recap and then I'm going to wrap this video up. When you're starting with the end in mind, you want to look at what it is you want long term and short term. And then you want to look at how do you want this money coming in? Do I need it coming in regularly and often or do I want it coming in in lump sums and every and, and every now and then annually or, or, or quarterly? This is the pre business plan stage. So before you even open up your business plan to look at what objectives I'm going to do to get me to this place, you're going to look at what it is I actually want from this place. What is it that I actually want? That's a very key question. Very key question. And to be fair, you should be asking yourself that at any given time. Once you've looked at these things, I think it's a great idea to put some dates on there. Just, just, just again, this is not a plan per se. This is you starting with the end in mind by looking at it, looking at what it is you actually want. I dare you, put a date in there. Now I have one challenge for you and that's for you to comment down below one goal that you have given yourself you would like to achieve from investing in property. And don't be shy. As for me, thank you for watching. Please like this video because I find if you like this video then I know the content's good. Press subscribe if you think that you need to know about getting started in property and I need to follow this girl's journey just a little bit more. I'll see you at the top.